nerdrotic.com. Welcome back to the Nerdrotic Podcast. My name is Gary Beekler. I come to you from nerdrotic.com. I am live in San Francisco, California, and down in San Diego is my good friend, Dennis Pathakis. What's up, man? Not so much. How are you doing? I'm doing very well. I'm very happy to be talking about The Tick. So uh, it is episode four, Party Crashers. We ended last week's, or or last episode, last week's episode, whoops, uh, with a fight between Overkill and The Tick. And Overkill had grabbed The Tick by his antennae and tossed him out a window. And that's where we start out this episode. And this comes directly from the comic, directly and directly from the comic and the cartoon. Uh, and right down to the flag and, uh, you know, the tick gives a nice monologue of falling, uh, you know, like you, do you want to fall like a, like a standing person (laughs) or what was it? Uh, a, uh, or do you accept the fall and, and, and like a defenestrated, like a defenestrated feline (laughs) and, uh, he lands face first and of course he's okay. So, I mean, that was always the one thing I wondered from the comic. Because in the comic, it even the comic starts out. Like, if you go back to issue number one, like he's in an insane asylum. But um, is it because he was a superhero or not? But he has superpowers, so yeah. um, that that's that's telling part of his origin. And uh, Overkill doesn't look upset either way that the tick survives, and then he grabs Arthur's backpack, and uh, you know is it. You know, those are my files. You don't deserve files. <laughs> and then he starts to go through them. He's all, oh, these are pretty good. Uh, and he pretty much takes uh, all of Arthur's research on the terror. You know, and and uh, when the tick falls, that's when we get the part when uh, Overkill's like, uh, what is that? A gene editing, a cyborg, an android? Um, which the tick could be any of those three things in this series. Um, I still think they're probably going to fall back on him just being nuts. But uh, we'll see. Um, I don't know. Yeah. I, it might be that Arthur has a superpower of being able to bring a hero forth from his mind. Manifest a hero from his mind, um, which maybe he manifested the villain from his mind. Who knows? But, be you know, well, the terror has been around since the 20, before Arthur was born. So. Yeah. The, Logan was asking me how old the terror was. And I'm like, well, you know, if he's been fighting him, the Superion for decades, 80 years. Uh, it's supposed to be 90 years old. In the comics, he's like 90 years old. Yeah. And- and he wrote, really he wrote a workout book. He wrote a workout book, terrorizing. <laughs> uh, and he actually shows up in the uh, in uh, the Fox live action series too. But this version yes. is so much better. And I think he's directly connected to Superion in some way, shape, or form. Oh, yeah. Uh, that ship that came down. Uh, so, um, yeah. We also have Overkill yeah. mentioning Karamazov in uh, association with the suit. Yes. Uh, who is, I guess, the creator of the suit. Um, we find out a little bit later on here in this episode as to who Karmatsov is. But uh, yeah, he actually, um, Overkill grabs Arthur's notes, takes off with them, and basically uh, is leaving the tick and Arthur to themselves. Uh, as uh, <laughs> tick, the tick puts it, uh, he calls uh, Overkill a gunmetal knife party. Yeah, which is the name of our next <laughs> band, by the way. Uh, yeah, when, when uh, they're they're all through with this fight and Tick and Arthur are walking down the street and Tick's, uh, the Arthur's all, man, I should have been fired. And the Tick's all, yeah, fired up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, he doesn't get uh, he doesn't get let go from uh, Fish Ladder and Sons. Uh, he just has the time off because the Tick and Overkill have destroyed pretty much yes. destroyed the building. Um, we also see uh, we we get a great after we see Arthur and. Um, and the tick walking down the street, we flash back. Well, we go back to Overkill. He's going on to the docks there, and this is where we meet Danger Boat. Yes, who's uh, start, it's spinning his own theme song, and it looks like it's on Fruity Loops. Danger Boat. <laughs> and actually, I'm going to put that theme in on our uh, the audio portion of our podcast. It's pretty damn funny, and uh, and his voice is Alan Tudyk. Alan Tudyk, who is just showing up effing everywhere. Yeah, he, he is. He must be like the most popular guy in Hollywood. Everybody must love this guy. Yeah, he's a good voice voice actor. Um, but yeah, he shows up in pretty much everything cool. 
Um, Does he not sound like Kit from uh, Knight Rider? Oh, absolutely. And as a matter of fact, uh, they're going to bring back Knight Rider, and I wouldn't be surprised at all if he is the voice. I, that wouldn't <laughs> shock me in the least bit. But, uh, you know, a couple of interesting little exchanges when they uh, when they get onto Danger Boat. Uh, he, you know, the, the Danger Boat's kind of chastising him, like, you don't call me. Uh, what's the matter? You don't answer your helmet anymore? He's all, I broke it in the fight. And he's, and he's all... You know, I'm not surprised at your emotional state considering, uh, you know, the circumstances. And I, that was just kind of a passing thing. But then when I watched it again, I'm like, oh, so that goes right into our sharpshooter is overkill. So I think it's pretty much set in stone. Uh, I know we've talked about the and some of our commenters have come in. It's there's no doubt in my mind. And if you do go back, the little scratch on his face, like you said, is yeah. there. So, OK, um, it's it's going to be uh, I think it's it's going to be interesting and and I love him as a character I love his look I love his mask I love everything about it. I know you're not supposed to but it's actually a cool looking superhero <laughs> uh, yeah so like it, it's kind of like if if Robin went real I mean just really wrong I mean but not Frank Miller wrong not quite that wrong you know yeah. uh, Dark Knight Strikes again but uh, you yeah. um, know and the guy even kind of looks like he could probably like play a Nightwing. So a uh, really great character and the whole relationship between danger boat and overkill is freaking hilarious. Uh -huh. And yeah. a Foham. And a fo can you want me to make you some Foham? <laughs> a can of Foham. No, I'm not hungry. I'm going out, but you just got back in. <laughs> <laughs> and so basically danger boys is gay roommate. <laughs> you know, it's, it's pretty funny. Uh, <laughs> Always looking out for him, kind of mothering him a little bit. Yeah, it's funny. So oh. yeah, we have um, we we find out that the tick goal, of course, doesn't remember where he lives. Yep. And um, so Arthur's going to go up and go to bed, and the tick's like, "Well, I'll just go around and be here, kind of thing." And I'll wait for further instructions. Yeah. And so Arthur invites him up and goes, "You know what? For tonight, tonight only." It's a one-time thing tonight. And uh, so Arthur wakes up in the morning and uh, he thinks the tick is in the shower. And we see the tick behind him actually in the kitchen. And the tick has brought in uh, the homeless guy that was outside wearing a tinfoil hat, who we find out is Tinfoil Kevin. Tinfoil Kevin, uh, who only... Uh, he thought, what are you doing in the shower? Well, I only take baths when there's candles. <laughs> and apparently this is the only time he talks. So... I don't know if he doesn't talk with his tinfoil hat on or just in social situations, but when he's homeless guy, he goes back to just going, uh, you know, cause you notice he doesn't talk otherwise. Uh, but he's pretty funny and I, uh, he hasn't, he's even though he's homeless, he's not office -less. Apparently he has an office. Yeah, uh, exactly. Yeah. That, that whole scene. Uh, yeah. That I just, you know, not to get too personal here. That just reminded me of a couple people that like, oh man, you're down on your luck. I'll let you work in the comic shop for a couple days, a couple weeks, and they ended up staying for a year. Doesn't that wasn't remind? Me. You? I know it wasn't you, but it, doesn't it remind you of somebody? I don't know. It was, it was funny. I'm like, God damn. And then no, what the best part was when they were both sitting in the kitchen. And Arthur's phone or phone is ringing, and the tick is drinking out of the coffee pot, and he's like, Hey, that's a phone. You know it. <laughs> Again, it reminded me of a couple of workers I used to have. Like, I'd be busting up all these long boxes and doing all this work, and they're standing around, like, drinking pop. And hey, the phone's ringing. That box looks heavy. <laughs> yeah. Ah, it just reminded me of some time back at the comic outpost. Yeah. Um, oh, and then uh, they, they uh, start talking about overkill, and we get uh, the best line of the series, uh, mm -hmm. you know. When uh, oh, Arthur's geez. Arthur's got to um, go to, he gets a call from Dot and he has to go pick up a cake because he's going to his stepfather's birthday party. And uh, the tick's like, well, don't you think we should be uh, looking for the emotionally, uh, what is it, the emotionally unbalanced zip line ejaculating vigilante? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, his his performance on it was better. I put it on my, on my Facebook post. That was like, that. you know, there's there's actually two great lines from this episode. We'll get to the other one later. But, uh, man, like I said on my Facebook post, that's dialogue, folks. That's freaking dialogue, you know. Yeah, this, this episode had a lot of really good dialogue. There, there's uh, existential, uh, uh, existentialism as well. 
Oh, that that's the the best thing about this, and and you know because uh, you know they, they, hey they've said it, we've said it, we all know it that th- th- there's a different there's there's making fun of stuff like the boys like Garth Ennis does, and you could tell Garth Ennis has disdain for superheroes. Yeah. Uh, you could tell certain writers have dis- the, like the guy who just wrote Secret Empire. You could tell hates superheroes. Um, this is totally different. And this is why, it, you know, it's really important to talk about, you know, everybody's saying it's time for a show like this, a satire. But it's not, it's a satire, but it's also a straight superhero story. And it's kind of reminding us what a straight superhero story is. Yeah. Like within all this satire, there is still a bad guy threatening people and we have good guys trying to stop him and we don't have you know yeah we had a little bit of you know we had the anti-hero battling that you know the tick and everything but it's still just a straight superhero story which is what the comic book industry and the movies need to get back to uh to make this thing work and continue on because you know it, you know that even though this tick is dark it's not without hope you know it, it's got the tick oh, no, it's, it's, constantly reminding you of destiny you know it's like a thousand suns brighter than anything that the Murderverse uh, version of DC has come out with. Absolutely, I mean, cinematically, cinematically, um, cinematically yes. and, and uh, you know, and the e- equally can be applied to the horse crap that is coming out of Marvel Comics, the comic books, uh, the, the comics, source yes. material, the freaking source material that's being destroyed right now, um, which is sad, uh, which is very sad. But that's why that this this the tick stands out uh to me it's not just the satire um and it's funny as hell too um it, it, when uh, so we get to we get to walter's house who's having his 60th birthday and this, and, the, and the guy playing well, it before we it? get to walter's house actually we have miss uh miss lint trying to activate the suit oh yeah sorry lair. yeah we can't go <laughs> this, is the best, this is the best part dude <laughs> and so she's trying to get the suit to work it's not working and then in comes her roommate slash ex-husband derek and Derek kind of puts on the, the helmet, but he can't get it over his man bun. So he has like the, you know, the visor down here. So you can see, because I bet you he has, he has a cool heads up display and he's looking at it. And every time he looks over at Miss Lint, the suit keeps saying for an object detected. <laughs> <laughs> and it keeps zooming in on her eye, her, her glass eye. And she's just trying to go, well, can you get it activated? He goes, nope, it looks like it's scanned, uh, retina scan to somebody else and it's in sleep mode. So she needs to go and find Arthur in order to unlock it. She's, she's pissed at Arthur, and also, you know, she saw the lint attracting well, to and, her. And then when Derek walks in, he uh, she had earlier kicked in uh, what uh, uh, there's he had a bike in pieces, and it turns out um, to, to make this guy as douchey as possible. For one, he's got a shirt on that says "This is what a feminist looks like." He's got a man bun, and he rides a trike. <laughs> I was trying to figure out what that bike was in the background, and it's a freaking trike. So it's one of those. It, it's a tricycle that you lay down in and ride. And uh, it, only the douchiest of douchers ride bikes like this. And they all have man buns. Uh, and yeah, and he uh, talks about the, the divorce agreement. Well, you, one sh- uh, the roommate shall not molest or electro molest any of the property of said ex-husband. <laughs> <laughs> or kill. <laughs> or kill. Yeah. Um, and it, it's funny because it's, it's, it's in that little scene you can still tell it was so well done that like they hate each other but they don't yeah. you know what i mean it's it's uh having having lived with the next wife for a period of time while you're going divorce i totally <laughs> i don't know i really identified with that scene like there there has to be the brady bunch tape through the middle of the house dude <laughs> for anything to work uh, and it generally never does uh, but neither of them wants to abandon the house because uh, whoever abandons the house abandons the house and you have a right to live there. Then it's really crazy, these laws. But, uh, you, you know, she and when she when he's pissing her off, she's all, why don't you just buy buy me out? He's all, why don't you buy me out? And she's all, it's my lair. <laughs> and it's just a condo. Uh, it's funny. Good shit. Good stuff, man. Yeah. Very good stuff. So then we get to Walter's house. Yes. Yeah, so then we get to Walter's party. Um, and. Uh, Arthur has picked up a cake because he's supposed to pick up a cake and uh, we meet Walter for the first time and Walter uh, you know Arthur's telling him happy birthday and he goes and Arthur is just kind of he's a very passive uh, not passive aggressive but just kind of passive annoying I guess you could say uh, because you know Arthur wishes him a happy birthday and he goes well I'm just older that's all it is 
kind of thing. And then he goes into a story about, I went to the market, not the market, the new market by the house. Cause it's closer. And a woman told me happy birthday today. And I'm like, well, I'm just older. And she goes, and then she told me about this really good deal that I had on, on cheese. On oh, cheese. And Some, somebody just meandering stories. Somebody has, uh, th that is directly based. It's actually perfect. It, you know, typical, older stepdad in his 60s casting <laughs> like that that was written perfectly for it. right down to the stupid sweater he was wearing by ever well you know who one he of those, is right yeah well he's jewel pierre mao in the expanse yeah. for one yeah he's yeah. like the the bad he's the big bad in the expanse and he's playing this <laughs> dorky stepfather <laughs> which is so fucking funny it's like the arbiter of the proto molecule is wearing one of those dumbass sweaters <laughs> yeah God, if I, and I mean, face. it's hilarious. And of course, he has to ask, ask Arthur. He goes, well, I heard about your episode. And I just want to know, how are your feet, Arthur? Are your feet? <laughs> <laughs> so, so, yeah. So he's a passive aggressive uh, 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 narcissist with a foot fetish. <laughs> it's just funny. Just well done. Uh, the whole yeah. dinner party thing was or birthday party thing was uh, it, i don't know man that that this is what makes the tea this is ben edlin humor to a t right down yes. to uh <laughs> you know and then the tick shows up uh and uh you know of course him and walter like hit it off per like they're made for each other right <laughs> and he's well, like, yeah i love the exchange at the door when he opens it up and arthur goes well look at you and tick goes impossible <laughs> <laughs> i know right <laughs> Which doesn't face Walter at all. No. <laughs> You're a superhero. What do you bench? No idea. You know. Can I have some more uh, cheese? <laughs> yeah. And I mean, they are just really hitting it off, which is very strange. Uh, that's when that's when we get the other clue to uh the tip tick's identity or like how out of it he is when Walter asks him, So is that a super suit? And the uh, the tick was like He goes, Yeah, or he goes, is that you or is that something that you wear? And of course, <laughs> his, am I ever naked or am I never, am I never not, not naked? naked? Yeah. <laughs> the other is the mirror of the self. <laughs> I finally understand family. <laughs> yep. But I mean, like he, does he, does he, re, re, okay. So there's the ex existentialness of that. Or does he even realize he's wearing a costume? I mean, <laughs> does the tick take a shower? What's going on here? You know? Does yeah, he stink? Exactly. Uh, you know these these are questions we have to know. This is it's 2017 storytelling here. So, well, depending if it was a movie, they wouldn't have to explain it. But it's an Amazon show, so they do. And so we also, uh, get, yeah, um, Dot avoiding Arthur, you know, avoiding telling Arthur that she's working helping the Pyramid Gang patch up, you know, the guys in the. Pyramid and she gang. lets it. Well, she almost lets it spill too. Yeah, she almost does, but then yeah, she kind of covers it up. And then she gets a little defensive uh, about some stuff. And the tick at this point is also, he keeps trying to pull Dot aside. We need to have the talk yep. about Arthur. Have you heard the and, good news uh, about yeah. Arthur and his destiny? <laughs> yeah, especially when uh, the whole thing with, you know, this is one of the tick's friends. Well, he's not really a friend. He goes, no, no, no. He's more like a partner. <laughs> <laughs> and they're all, oh. <laughs> yeah. Arthur, he could be because uh, Paloma shows up. Or, no, sorry, Paloma. Miss Lint shows up as Paloma. <laughs> yes. And she's covered over a little bit of that scar with some yeah. makeup. And... She has a good little uh, glass eye in. She shows up at the party. And uh, the reason she shows up, uh, the reason they found out when... Uh, uh, when she was with Derek is that the suit is imprinted on Arthur. Uh, they, she needs to bring it back, put it back on him so he can access the operating system to basically unlock it, unlock it, put it back to the default setting. Um, and this is one of the funniest scenes too. We're not going to describe it. You just got to go back and watch it. Paloma has him up in a room and she, and he's, and she's all strip and he starts to take his clothes off and she's all, I want to put the uniform back on you. He's like, Oh, thank God. And it's like, oh, you little beta. <laughs> I would have been okay with, I mean, I'm sorry, Miss Lintz, pretty hot. I would have had no problem with her telling me to strip. But obviously he did. He was like, oh, thank God. She just wants the uniform, <laughs> which was funny. Um, and, you know, she, he has to access the operating system. So he puts the helmet back on. And the whole thing, I know we talked about in the previous podcast, like this is bed inland humor. So you've got the operating system like spinning around in front of your eyes. So you have to move it like this and it's the whole scene of him just like 
Yeah, he's moving he's his head back and forth. Stuff. And then to access it, he has to move his head forward, like, you know, down, yep. bouncing it forward. So he's going to side to side and then forward. And, and the like, language is Romanian. Ur- yeah, which is a very, you know, uh, rare and uh, dialect, too. So he doesn't understand any of it. No one understands any of it. And he finally accesses a uh, video of Dr. Uh, Karmatsov, who's speaking in Romanian and basically, I guess, describing the uses of the suit. Um, I think it's supposed to be like a welcome video. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> An orientation to the suit. And uh, which actually we find out later on in another episode, but we're not going to get to that yet. No. Um, but we do find out that the suit is part of something called Project Achilles. We don't know what that is. It's just mentioned that it's part of something called Project Achilles. And um, Arthur realizes that he can't let Miss Lent have the suit. Yep. At that point, yeah, he, he starts uh, starts answering the hero's call. Yes. <clears throat> yeah, and uh, Achilles. What does Achilles have? Achilles? A heel. A heel. The, yeah, a heel. Yeah, the heel. So, uh, yeah, it, and uh, okay. And that also relates to the news broadcast that we have in the, in the dining room that they've been just kind of peppering in throughout the episodes of the VLM. Yes. The very large man has, uh, was a gardener who got hit by a random radiation ray or maybe not so random. Well, he was assaulted. He was, he was assaulted, assaulted. In his gardening, gardening van by uh, some radiation uh, stuff. He was poisoned by radiation. So he has grown up to uh, two, 180 to 200 feet at this point. <laughs> and he's just, the guy, the guy, it's so damn funny. Uh, you know, yeah. so maybe he doesn't realize he's big. I guess that's the thing is, uh, you know, <laughs> and yeah, he's just walking. He's naked, completely naked. So completely they're naked. pixelizing out, you know, certain anatomy on the TV. And, and, and it's pretty funny, actually. Um, so people are watching this at the birthday party because at one point we have Walter opening up gifts and he gets uh, the book signed or um, written by uh, Onward, the, the dog. And uh, he also gets some sheepskin slippers and he's shown them to the tick because the tick's sitting next to him. And they're just, they're both in awe of all these oh, presents. Feel the fleece majesty. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and so they're watching this thing on TV. And uh, that's when Dot gets her uh, phone call from Stash, yes. the owner of the roller rink. And uh, he's got more work for her. And she's trying to cut ties with them. But Stash, of course, offers her a lot more money. Yeah, I love that she's doing all this to keep her rent at the roller rink. It's not like to keep her rent to live in or anything. It's so she can still do her roller rink thing, which is funny. Um, uh, you know, one of our one of my friends does that over in the East Bay. Uh, yeah, she's a big Tick fan too, by the way. Um, yeah, it's uh, uh, and uh, yeah, she decides to quit. And at that point, she's like shows her strength. Well, no, and, she was going to, and then. And the, he offers her more money and you know, he's like, come on, you know, he goes, I, he goes, I, it's very lucrative for you. He goes, I'm, I've got a lot of clients. Why don't you come back? And but she like, says she's not going to do it anymore, but we'll see if that lasts. Yeah. Um, so, uh, Miss Lint, uh, attacks Arthur back up upstairs. Uh, and Arthur runs out in the hallway. He's getting uh, tagged and then he picks up a vacuum cleaner. <laughs> and of course, Miss Lint blows up the vacuum vacuum cleaner. <laughs> and it's it, it just the look on her face as the cloud <laughs> starts going to her is so damn funny, dude. Yeah. The twitch oh, in her eye. And... Yara Martinez is great in this. Um, so and we also can... have Ramsey's. Uh, we flash over to Ramsey's, what he's doing. And uh, he says that there's a tracker that has popped up on the phone. The suit has activated. It's come out of sleep mode and he can track it now. And so he's getting the guys together and they're going to go and find where the suit is. Yep. And, uh, oh, there's Pepper right behind you. What's up, Pep? Yep. And that's when uh, Paloma, or Paloma, I keep saying Paloma. <laughs> <laughs> that's what Miss Lit uh, goes after Arthur, and Arthur jumps off. The, and that's where we we started the episode falling, and we end the episode with falling, but him falling upward. He starts to fly, and he flutters away. And yes. that's where we end the episode. Um, this was my favorite episode. I'm, I'm not sure if it's this one or the next one that are my favorite episodes, but the, this this definitely was up there. This it, this was the funniest episode by far, by far. 
Yeah, um, I think the next episode for me was actually the my, my favorite. Yeah, episode. it might be too. Yeah, j- well, just because it's got that. It, well, we'll get to that. We'll actually begin well, to that. It has more soon. danger boat. <laughs> it's got more danger boat. Danger <laughs> boat. Uh, and danger bolt's uh, pretty catty. It's it's pretty funny. Um, oh yeah, yeah it is. Or it so, is. So yeah, so we're uh, pretty damn sure. Well, no, I'm it, the overkill is the sharpshooter. The tick is either amalgamation of the flag five based on Arthur's consciousness, who somehow made a superhero out of nothing. Well, you got to remember that was one thing that uh, Dot had said early on too. She goes, I thought you uh, don't trust superheroes anymore. That you've lost all your trust in any superheroes. So that was very telling right there. So if he's lost all trust, yet he's trusting the tick, the tick yep. has to have come from him. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, oh, and another thing, I think this happened in a previous episode when they were talking outside the window and he was talking to the tick and, and they were just kind of running over his, his memory. And uh, Arthur had said, Yeah, we have just met. And the tickle goes, have we, you know? Yeah. So uh, he kind of insinuated that he's actually been around longer. So yeah, well, um, <clears throat> I, I suppose we'll find out. I kind of think it's a good mystery that they should kind of stick with for a long time and make, you know, and, and this is the, what Ben Edlin is great at is payoff. Okay. Yes. He, he is the master of payoff. That's what makes him a good writer. There, you know, anybody can set stuff up. Great. You know, um, uh, Stephen Moffat is is the king of one of the, some of the best setups ever with uh, pretty bad payoff. Um, and you know the other thing too, uh, Ben Edlin's really good at too. We were we were talking about in preachers about um, you know uh, filler episodes, things like that. When Ben had to deal with filler episodes for Supernatural, he actually made them fun. And well, yeah, that's that's you know that's when you do uh, you know that Supernatural did this. That's when you do. Um, like you, you, you go a little weird. You make an, you make an all anime episode, or you freaking do a musical, or uh, you, you do a smile time. <laughs> you, you do a, yeah, you, you, or you dive into one of your uh, sub characters and and you know find out that he's got or he or she's got a, like a fucked up past. You know that's what he is so great. I mean, and and you, you go through. Highly recommend getting this, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, this is the the first twelve and, and some of the flyers that uh, all Ben Lindlin written, and. This guy's had it for so long, and we were just talking about uh, writers who, you know, like Lawrence Kasdan in our pre-production meeting, you know, some writers, you know, are good for a little while. Some writers are good throughout their whole career. He is one of those. He is one of those who's just on all the freaking time. He is a, he's a creative genius. Yes. Creative genius. And he's an artist, too. So, um, and pretty nice guy. You know, we met him briefly. Uh, mm-hmm. Pretty nice guy. And um, I think, I don't think he gets enough work. Uh, I honestly think if he ran a show like Gotham, it would be, I mean, not that it's bad, but it would be 20 times better. I think if he, you know, jumped on, I, I, he could do, I mean, he's so versatile. He could go do Walking Dead and do, do it you think, straight. Now, what about Star Wars? What if he was to come in and... He could do it. Absolutely. As a matter of fact, I think he would get the humor that people perceived Star Wars had. Star Wars didn't have that much humor. I think, you know, people... You know, those of us from my generation remember Star Wars differently than anybody else because we actually got to see it in the movie theaters. Yeah. Or some of them. Okay. And 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 the only humor, there was humor in it, but it, it was, um, that was the kind of humor they used to pepper through every good movie back in the 80s and late 70s. There was always like a little swashbuckler buckler aspect and it had to be a person. It was Harrison Ford who brought the humor. Han Solo brought all the humor to to star wars yeah um but the whole thing with like uh in jedi with he goes well fly casually uh, you know the, the whole you know i don't know fly casually is what he tells exactly. Chewie with the yeah d- d- dude uh i was just watching last night 48 hours which is a straight up action movie that was eddie murphy's first movie that had comedy elements in it he, he had some routines in it but it was a straight up action flick is one of the greatest ever made that is the perfect perfect uh mix of humor in a in a straight movie and that's what star wars needs if anything and ben edlin would be the one who could do that absolutely i think uh he would fix it he's a fixer he uh a fixer. but but they're not gonna they're not gonna go to him 
They're, they're no, going to go no. to one of their little incestuous cabal that they have going on there at Disney. Um, and we're, uh, you know, we're just so many things come before story, you know, and th th this is why we need stuff like the tick and we need Amazon prime, um, for now anyway. I mean, they're a gatekeeper. Okay. But, um, your mic's off there, bud. Your mic's off I know. there. I know. I was unmuting. I was muting because oh. there was some loudness going on outside. Ah, okay. so. so yeah. So yeah, just to, to sum it up, I mean, like that's what we need to take. We need Amazon Prime. They are changing uh, the landscape of entertainment, and uh, for the better. I don't think Netflix is in particular. I don't. I I don't like some of their formulas. I'm kind of like I'm finding myself watching Amazon Prime more. Uh, they have more options. Um, and it's aesthetically a little better for me than Netflix is now. Um, Hulu's Tiny. pretty good now too. Comrade detective. Go for it. Well, if we have time, which I got, I, I am not going to have time to watch anything new because we'll be podcasting about many, many things starting this Sunday with the Oroville. <clears throat> We're going to give it a shot. It's a two part, uh, a two part premiere and it's premiering on a Sunday and then it's moving to Thursday. So uh, then we have The Gifted at uh, early October. Um, who knows? Maybe Ash vs. Evil Dead will spring on us early, but I doubt it. Um, but we will continue doing The Tick and uh, Preacher. Preacher is going to be next uh, Monday, but uh, I'm going to sprinkle these Tick episodes throughout the week. So we appreciate you watching. Uh, you can find all of our links are in the description below. We are working on a prize package. You subscribe to our YouTube channel and you comment and you are in the running for art in the back, $20 gift card and some other stuff that we're going to present to you probably in, our, in the last episode. We'll have it all together. Um, yeah. So uh, any final words, Dennis? Don't let the door hit your ass on the way out, America. Spoon! <laughs> Spoon. You have been listening to a Nerd Rotic Podcast. Please subscribe.